Okay, cool. So we're live on Shems University. What we're going to be doing today is going over Forex Alerts basic stuff so you understand how to really use the system that we have to be more profitable. And how you do this is in a couple of simple ways. There's a few things that I actually want to highlight with what we do to enter alerts. Obviously, iGenius offers you guys a whole bunch of different tools. And um, with the investing, with the trading and you know, the education, all that kind of stuff. So I want to ask all of you in the chat right now, who like what, what's your favorite thing that has to do with the services that we offer for trading and investing? Because I know we talk a lot about marketing as well and social media and stuff, but when it comes to trading and investing and actually having money work for you, what is your favorite service that we offer? Drop it in the chat so I can take a look. I'm going to go over one specifically now, but it's going to be really cool. Okay, Forex, Forex, AI. What else? I want to see some engagement in the thing. Binary, of course, I'll be saying binary or binary trader. What else? What else? Let's get, is everyone just only into Forex and binary or anyone into crypto, NFTs? Damn, a lot of binary fans. Okay, okay. That's good. That means that means that GC Nitro is doing their job, Endotech. Okay, cool. So you guys understand that we have all the information, we have all the education. So by the way, if you guys do not understand this, and um, I just want you to I just want you guys to know also that anything I go over here is in the university. You can learn yourself. The reason why we do these calls is to give you extra support so we can go over things that maybe you wouldn't be able to go through or maybe not understand upon a first reading or first viewing. Um, it's something that you need to hear in a different way. And that's my goal here is to explain it in a different way so that all of you can understand. Uh, what I'm going to be doing today is going over, um, I'd say around five to six of the fundamentals of entering trade alerts. And this would stem from understanding what a currency pair is, um, you know, what, what the prices are going to be trading at, stop losses and take profits. Also, um, risk management, allocation, stuff like that, lot size. So we're going to get into it. I'm going to try to write really big. Okay, I'm not going to erase this, but let's uh, figure out how this is going to work. Is, is the height of this good? Yeah, I think it is. And um, so we're going to go into Forex alerts. So <laughs> I write this a bit bigger. But there's five simple steps, and we're going to go over one over here. We're going to use a different color. If I use red, do you guys see that a bit better? Is that better, or is it worse? I feel like it's equal, right? It's, it's okay. It's okay. So if you guys have to zoom in, zoom in. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to do that. Um, or maybe I'll even crop it on the YouTube thing. So when it switches to this, you just see this. But the first thing we're going to go over is currency pairs. And currency pairs are super important when it comes to Forex because what we go over here is exactly what is happening in the world. And what is happening in the world with a whole bunch of different currencies is, you guys know, there's the GDP, there's inflation, there's um, you know unemployment status, a whole bunch of different things. If you took economics, you understand this. I took one economics. Actually, I took two economics classes in school, and what they did teach me was how to trade in the forex market. But what I did learn was that um, you know the forex market is influenced by a whole bunch of different things, and we're taking that into account with forex when it comes to currency pairs. So that's number one. So a good example would be maybe the USD CAD. I'm gonna be a bit biased and pick something that works for me because this is something that you know I'm Canadian, right? I use the Canadian dollar a lot, and it travels the US a lot, so that's something that I use pretty often. Number two. It's going to be exactly what we're trading. So is it a buy or is it a sell? So order type. So what is the order type? And what is the action that we're taking? Okay. So this could be a buy or a sell. Right? A buy or a sell. And we need to know this. And this is super important. The reason why is because, you know, when we're entering alerts, we want to know if the market's going to move in a direction that favors us. And we got to know what direction that is. So when I'm analyzing the market, I got to look at trends. I got to observe everything, fundamentals, right? Um, you know, I can do my technical analysis and see, you know, what direction the market's going to move. So let's say, as an example, if we looked at Bitcoin in 2020, you know, that was a huge uptrend. If we look at it 2021, 2022, I mean, it's kind of been hovering, right? In the beginning of the year, it was doing really well. Now, right now, it's, it's low. Does that mean it's bad? No, but we got to understand how these movements work so we can start entering trades in our favor, okay? Now, with number three... We're going to get into terminology. So terminology is going to work like stop losses and take profits, right? So SL, TPs, uh, let's just say lot sizes, stuff like that. Understanding how to trade and what to trade when you're actually going through this. And this is going to be really cool because I need to know what my targets are on the winning end and on the losing end. And also I need to know what I'm risking while I'm going through these. Okay, you understand? So that is really important when it comes to entering things because we've got to make sure that we're protected when it comes to our trades. We also got to know what profits we're making and we got to know what the value is in pips and also in dollars. So I'm going to put pips here. 
pesos terminology you have to know, and dollars. Okay? So that's, that's going to be number three. Now what we're going to do in number four, number four is going to be all about risk management. Okay? Risk management, yes, it has to do with stop losses um, and all that kind of stuff. But what I'm going to show more specifically is how to calculate what you can win, what you can lose, and what's going to be good based on your account. So I'd say this is going to be PIP calculation, a big part of that. This is stuff we're going to go over. <laughs> I'm going to have to erase all of this over here, or maybe I'll find a, like something on the side over here. Um, risk management, you know, understanding how much money I'm winning and losing going into the trade, that's super important. One of the biggest things, by the way, when I was trading for the first time, just so you understand why I go through this, is when I was trading in my first month, I started off with $1,000 and this was $1,000 that wasn't even mine. This was like borrowed money. And so there was a lot of emotion tied to it. And I hope you understand that when there's a lot of emotion tied to things, especially when it comes to results-based activities, you're going to really kind of make moves that probably aren't the best and you're going to chase money. You guys get that? You're going to chase money. You're not going to really treat it in a way and invest in a way that money is kind of building over time. So I made a lot of money really quick, but they say that good results reinforce bad behavior and so i was making money but i didn't realize that i was making a lot of mistakes and i wasn't implementing things like this to make my journey with as a trader more successful because a lot of you guys don't know you guys see me building the business you guys see me speaking at events or doing this kind of stuff posting tiktoks and whatever but when i started this business i was actually a full-time trader because the only thing i could do and the only thing i could really you know justify doing while i was a full-time student was trading because I thought in the beginning, it was just taking alerts, you know, copy pasting it and making money. And just, that's it. I thought that was going to be my only, only responsibility for my people that actually trade on this call. You understand that there's a lot more to it, but that's important with risk management. These are all things I wish I knew when I was getting started with trading and investing. So I could make a lot more money and be a lot more profitable. You know, when the time really came down to, you know, seeing my results and, and, and creating trading plans and doing all that sort of stuff. And then the last tip I'll just go over is psychology. The psychology of investing is super important. I'm not going to go into budgeting or like, you know, all that stuff. You guys have money pro for that, but psychology is really important when it comes to trading. Your mindset, and by the way, a lot of the mindset tips that I teach when it comes to online business and entrepreneurship are exactly the same as what they would be with trading. And that's what I really like is because you know, when I'm going into anything and I'm going into entrepreneurship and I've been spending a lot of money on my personal development, the reason I do that is because I know success happens here before I see it in real life. And I always say that. And whether that's, you know, through, through the business or through investing, it's going to manifest itself in the same way. I'm going to see a lot more results depending on my mindset. You guys agree with that? For my people that have experience, you guys, let me know in the chat if you guys agree with that, because you guys know that the mindset is super key. And that's what separates you know, a good investor, an average investor from an amazing investor and someone that actually makes a lot of money over time. So these are going to be the five things that we go over. I'm going to explain mostly, I'm going to explain uh, most of them, but the ones that I actually will go into drawing and doing all that kind of stuff is going to be, I want to draw it on the board, okay? Let me see who is in the chat. What did I miss? I see 10 messages. Okay, guys, so um does that make sense is everyone with me can you guys see the screen properly everything's good i just want to make sure give me a th let me look at the cameras give me a thumbs up cameras thank you okay awesome so this is a different style of training right i haven't done you know i actually used to do these back in the day i haven't done this in a long time so it's like a throwback it's a throwback wednesday for me but we're gonna go over it this okay currency pairs you understand that in every currency it's you're dealing with you're dealing with two currencies a currency pair deals with two things right you have your base and you have your quote. Is the terminology that important? Not really, but you guys will learn this in the university. So what I got to understand is that the exchange rate, how much space do I have? So the exchange rate, let's just say it's 1.2631. If it's that right now, I'm going to, let's say that would be pretty wild. But 1.2, you guys can't read it properly, whatever, it doesn't matter. The exchange rate is, um, is important because it's influenced by the currencies involved. So if I know... As an example, we're going to test you, but this is going to be very interactive. So I want all of you to answer. If I have the US dollar, that is, so if, if this is the exchange rate, which one holds more power? Which one is worth more? The US dollar or the Canadian in this example? And I want you all to be quick with this. 
we're gonna answer in the chat because I, I know all of you are in different levels and so there's a lot of beginners here but if i have the usd cat and it's 1.2631 in which which currency of the pair is worth more more valuable usd exactly right See, a lot of you know that just because you guys know that the U.S. dollar is worth more. So I gave you like a freebie over there. But in any case, if the exchange rate is greater than one, if the exchange rate is greater than one, you have two options. If it's greater than one, then the base is stronger than the quote. Okay. Some of y'all are like, what? What are you talking about? The base is stronger than the quote. Because this is the base and this is the quote. That's the terminology for it. If the exchange rate is lower than one, then what's stronger? The quote is stronger than the base. Or you say the base is less than the quote. Does so that make sense? I'm using like math terms. You guys know like the shark? You guys understand? I would actually give you a tutorial on what these arrows mean because I know a lot of us don't go through it. But that's, that's the principle behind this. So that's a giveaway for me to understand how these exchange rates are working. Also, I could, I could test. So a good example in real life is the Euro and the USD. The Euro and the USD were almost exactly one to one. I think they were once one for a couple of days. So a lot of you in Europe, for those of you that are in Europe right now, you understand that the Euro is worth more than the US dollar typically. But there was a moment in time where it was actually fluctuating right on that line of one, right? And, and a lot of traders were investing for the sales, um, you know, on the way down. And once it hit that one, everyone was, everyone was buying it. Right, because they knew the market was going to move up. So the understanding the importance of currency pairs and studying them is key to something that we call fundamental analysis. And fundamental analysis is looking at news, right? The economics of the country. Anything that has to do with things outside of the charts is fundamental analysis. So we're going to look into that. Okay, that's currency pairs. Does that make sense? I'm not looking at cameras. You guys got to let me know in the chat. Drop a one if that makes sense. And also feel free to ask questions during this thing. Like I said, I wanted to be interactive. And so if you guys have any questions along the way, let me know, because it's not something that I could just erase with my Apple pen. I have to actually erase things for real this time. But okay, cool, that's number one, done. Cool. Number two, order types, buying and selling. Buying and selling is really simple. Here's what I want you to understand about buying and selling. The trade alerts through the platform, if you haven't, if you haven't joined any of the alerts channels, please do that. Go to the alerts one bot, Telegram in your iGenius back office, go to Forex Thrive, Crypto Core, whatever and enter the alerts there, enter your ID number and your email, you'll have all the alerts. So here's what you guys gotta understand. With trading, you are actually gonna be told through the platform, this is why you guys pay money, is we're gonna tell you, well, not me, but the experts, so they're gonna tell you if it's a buy or a sell. Right, Ovid? Right, Joseph? You guys are telling them if it's a buy or a sell. So what does that mean? These guys know it better than anyone else. They are doing the work for you so that you don't have to analyze the market. That's all I want you to know about number two. If you're getting into actual trading, which is the, not the point over here, I'm not doing that. That's more advanced stuff, which we can do at a, you know, a later point. But that's why I have the boys you know, teaching that. If you guys want to understand how the markets work, then that's a conversation we can have. But as far as buying and selling, you're given the answer to the test. So you guys don't have to worry about that. That's, that's the good news, okay? Now, number three, stop losses and take profits. I'm going to go into kind of what these are. And... I'm gonna draw it over here. So I'm gonna move this a bit to the bit to that corner. Okay. I'm gonna make this as big as I can. So the, the, here we have a chart. Okay. And let's just say the market is moving in a manner where it's going like this, right? Y'all see that? Now at this point over here is what we call maybe a buying area or a selling area. In this case, let's just use the example of a buying area. And so we enter an alert over here. Let's just say Joseph sends you guys in GCSK. He's like, you guys know what? USD CAD, we're gonna buy it. So once this, he expects this to happen. He expects that to happen. Now in this hypothetical scenario, you know, you're gonna have your, a big win if it goes in that direction. Now, the cool thing is, is that a lot of people, and by the way, this is again, why you guys pay money. So I'm reinforcing this and why you guys are actually in this platform is because I don't wanna pay, you know, for nothing and just to learn, I wanna pay to actually have expert results. And the way to do that is to understand, you know, there are different profit targets and also protection, I would say stop losses, right? That will really help you with this. So here are two things you gotta know. 
One is the take profit, which by the way, there can be multiple. Let's say take profit one, two, and three. You might have a few different options. You guys only get to pick one. I know MetaTrader doesn't work anymore, but we get to pick it over here. So I'm gonna show you and bring you guys a bit closer. So you see that? You guys see that? On this chart, there's take profit one, two, and three. So there are different targets that you can enter um, for profiting in the markets. And these are given to you. Again, they're given to you, okay? So here's the other thing. And I'm actually gonna do a whole diagram right now. And I'm gonna flip the camera so you guys can see it. So on the other end, if the trade goes the opposite way, you cut this off. If I go down here, I lose my whole account. I blow my account. I get an email from my broker letting me know that I lost everything. To avoid that, I'm going to have a stop loss right over here. Okay. And what that helps me do is actually protect myself from losing more than I'm willing to lose. So based on my account, I don't, if I have hundred dollars, I don't want to lose a hundred dollars. I'm okay. Maybe losing three to 5%, depending on the kind of trader that I am. And if I'm okay with it, then I'm going to set a stop loss that corresponds to that percentage. And here's what I here. So I'm going to show you guys again. So the stop loss is designed over here to cut you off from the worst possible scenario. And these numbers, like I said, take profit one, two, and three, and the stop loss are given to you by the experts that we have in the financial markets. And, and so they're pretty much giving you everything that you need. Okay. Now the thing is, I don't want you guys just entering trades blindly. I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint when it comes to which take profits to enter. And I know Joseph did a training on this recently, and I thought it was really good because he was letting people know that, you know, the lower the take profit, so if you pick up the smaller one, you know, it's going to not give you as much money, but you're going to be a lot safer because the market, if, if the, think about it like this, if the trade wins, it's guaranteed to hit take profit one. You guys get what I'm saying? So if it's a winning trade, it's guaranteed to hit take profit one, but it's not guaranteed to hit take profit two or three. Those are, you know, more optimistic problems, uh, not, not problems, but more optimistic, you know, uh, outcomes. And so that's what we're gonna go over here is what, what do I do based on my schedule? So can I ask like you guys on the call, what do you do for work? Do any, are any of you working jobs? If you're not, are any of you students? What is it that you do right now while you're trading? Let me know in the chat. So I'm gonna, while you guys give me those answers, I'm gonna write down something here. So this is gonna be someone that has, mm, less time, more time, and I would say 50, 50. Okay. So let's take a look. Someone says, I'm a film producer, analyst, eight to four desk job, work a job, part-time, work a job. Okay, cool. So full-time, part-time, whatever the case is. For my people that have nothing, like you, you, got, you got lucky, you know, you're, you're done school or maybe you haven't started school, you're taking a year gap before you enter university or college, or you're someone that's not working at all, if you're a stay-at-home mom or dad or whatever the case is, you know, you have a lot of time. If you have a lot of time, then you probably have more time to educate yourself on how to analyze the markets, you probably have a bit more time to look at your phone. And because you can look at your phone more, you can monitor the trades that you're entering, or you can, you know, look at your laptop and monitor those trades that you're entering. So you can, you know, diligently look at, you know, what time I enter this trade, how much time has gone, how many pips I'm in profit. If that's the case, I recommend, you know, I'm not saying take, take profit three, but I would only take, take profit three if you have more time to watch your trades. Take profits too, I would say if it's your 50-50, maybe you're working a part-time job, right? So you can enter trades when you're done work and you can kind of look at them over time and you can see, but then you have to go to bed. So like you can't really look at them that much. I say take profit two is okay in that case. And take profit one where you don't have like any really any time, this is probably the best passive way to make money through the R alert system. Because yes, you're going to be hitting low take profits and maybe your risk to reward won't be in your favor, but you won't have to worry about monitoring trades for a long time. So one thing that I did as a full-time biomedical science student is I was entering TP once for every trade that I had, but I was upping the allocation. I was, I was putting the lot size way higher than I should have. And I probably shouldn't have done that because again, like I did not understand it. And I only had a thousand dollars and I was putting like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0.5. And, uh, and the, the stop losses were sometimes like a hundred pips. So if I lost, it was going to be like a pretty big loss. But what I did is, is I acknowledged that, you know, if I don't have a lot of time, I'm going to enter a lower take profit because the last thing I want to do and, and things that I've seen so many times, traders mistakes 
101 lesson right here is if you don't have a lot of time, you shouldn't be entering a lot of trades, number one. And number two, you should not be entering high take profits without being able to monitor it. Okay, because you're gonna have to adjust stop loss to break even for my people that know how to do that and all, all that stuff. There's some things you have to do, like housekeeping within the trade itself, that you might not have the time for. Okay, so does that make sense? Cool, drop a one if that makes sense. Um, and if you guys have any questions, like I said, feel free to ask because I'm speaking, assuming that you have some knowledge on trading, right? Like I mentioned, trailing stop losses, I mentioned you know, like account sizes and, and brokers and all that. So I'm assuming you have some type of knowledge. If you don't, please go into the university and learn and go to Market Pro and do all that kind of stuff, okay? So that's um, stop losses, take profits. Now we're gonna go into lot sizes. And this is something that I think is a bit, um, here, let's see if I have space over there. Okay, cool. So lot sizes. Lot sizes can be 0 0.01, 0 0.03, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 1 1.0. That's just like random lot sizes, okay? I know there's writing on the left or whatever side that is for you. Don't worry about it. So lot sizes. Lot sizes are a way for you to pretty much tell the exchange and, and the app that you're using for trading, you know, how much you're willing to lose, how much you're willing to win, because each of them corresponds to a certain amount of money that you're going to make per pip that you catch. So what is a pip? A pip is percentage in points or points in percentage, whatever you prefer, doesn't really matter. But pips are the unit of measurement in the Forex market. In the Forex market, just like any other thing in terms of measurement has units. And it's not like centimeters, kilometers, you know, liters, it's not like that, it's pips. And pips are pretty much the unit of measurement that determine one movement that will make you X amount of dollars. It's a point in percentage, right? So if I'm collecting 20 pips on a take profit one, what does that mean? Well, I have to convert that into dollars. How am I gonna know? But to convert it into dollars, I need to know what my lot size is because my lot size has an associated dollar value per pip that I gain or per pip that I lose. Let me say that again. So for me to calculate how many dollars or euros or whatever you're gonna make per, uh, per pip, you have to know what your lot size is. Your lot size corresponds to a certain you know, um, dollar amounts that you'd either win or you'd lose, okay? Based on the movements in the market. So I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna write it down over there, but that's the idea of what the lot size gives you. If I'm, if I'm trading with a thousand dollar trading account, but I only have, you know, but I'm entering like zero or 1.0. For my people that know about trading, is that a good idea? Yes or no? If I have a thousand dollars in my account and I'm entering one standard law, is that a good idea? Yes or no? Probably not, right? What if I have a hundred dollar account and I'm entering a standard law? <laughs> Some brokers don't even let you do that. It's probably a bad idea because your account will get blown in like two seconds. And like, if you're on the losing end, can you win a lot? Of course you can, but it's, you're a gambling at that point. We're not, we don't want to gamble here. We want to invest. That's why we're here. Trust me. I've seen people make a ton of money with these alerts with like a hundred dollars, $200, but because they had a good risk management, do I recommend going with a hundred dollars? Probably not. You want to up that account size. Definitely. But I've seen people with less money, make more money. I've seen people with a lot of money, lose it really quick. They end up driving themselves out of the trading industry and they're like, trading sucks. It's a scam. It doesn't work. And this is why you hear negative things about trading and investing because most people aren't investing, they're gambling. Does that make sense? Most people aren't investing, they're gambling. That is the reality of the situation. So, okay, what do I need to do now? All right, I understand my loss sizes. So here's a table I'm going to give you right now. This is a, an imaginary table and I'm going to give you the corresponding, the corresponding dollar per pip value that this is. So 0 0.01 isn't one cent. These represent, you know, micro lots, mini lots, standard lots, whatever. You guys can go through that in the university. All I like to think of is how much it's worth. This is 10 cents per pip. Okay. This is 30 cents per pip. If 0.01 is 10 cents a pip and 0 0.03 is 30 cents a pip, what would 0 0.1 be? What do you guys think? And I prefer answers from the new people. Just use logic. What do you think 0 0.1 would be? 
it would be one dollar per hit, right? I know it's not going to be the easiest to read, but as long as you hear what I'm saying as you write it down, you can kind of make out what I'm talking about. If I put 0 0.5, it's going to be five dollars per pit. And if I put 1.0, it's going to be ten dollars per pit. Now, here's one cool thing. I'm going to I'm going to give you the math. If you have if you want to calculate your lot size. The equation is, I don't know, do, did we teach equations recently? I've been, I, I, this is like old school, by the way. Like I come from old school trade, I say old school, is 2018, but like I've been in the space longer than most people. And, and uh, back then, at least for the platform, right? For this, it's a count size divided by 10,000. That's how you calculate your loss size. How I calculate dollar per pip is account size divided by 1,000. So let's use a real life example. Let's use a real life example. Damn, that's ugly. Sorry, guys. <laughs> so um, if I have $500, what's $500 divided by 10,000? Someone do the math quick and drop it here. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Account size, 500 divided by 10,000, 0 0.05, exactly. So I know if I have a $500 account, this, this is not exactly what you should have, but it's the frame of reference, 0 0.05. If I have $1,000 in my account, I do divided by 10,000, that's a tenth of it, so it's 0 0.1. If I have $800 in my account, 800 divided by 10,000 is 0 0.08. Okay, so you understand that this calculation works to calculate your average lot size. So if I was entering one trade a day, usually, right, I would do I would do that math. Is it exactly no? Because there's certain types. There's risky trades and not risky trades. You know, there's there's different types of trades, but that's a good frame of reference. Now, if I'm doing five hundred dollars divided by ten thousand, I get zero point zero five. But now I do five hundred divided by one thousand, I'm getting zero point five zero point five dollars per pip, which is what zero point five dollars per pip is fifty cents a pip. That's how you calculate it. Okay, so those two equations, Tilly just wrote one of them down. Okay, keep that. Take note of it. Watch the recording as well if you want to hear that all over again. Okay, so that's that's the main idea with this. I'm going to erase this, and we're going to move on to the next part, which is PIP calculation for your risk management and all that kind of stuff, okay? See, I, um, it's funny because Megan's here and she knows um, that I was like, oh man, I forgot my iPad. I can't do this training. And I'm like, wait, we have a whiteboard. Like, you know what? Entrepreneurs find solutions, right? That's what we said. So the next thing that we're going to do is PIP calculations. Now that I finished, uh, I'm going to do it differently. This, this this now we're on number four okay do any of you have any questions so far by the way any questions let me know in the chat if not i'll assume we're good let me take a look at the cameras Regina, kiki daniel michelle nick carmen Irvin, blaze oh we got a lot of people with their cameras on that's what's up okay cool so um number four is risk management and risk management, like I said, I'm going to go over this again like this, and then I'm going to draw it out. So risk management is important because based on your account size, you're going to have, you know, different types of trades. There's going to be low risk trades, there's going to be high risk trades. Now, how do I adjust my allocation or my lot size based on what type of trades I'm entering? Now, okay, Christian, how do I know, how do I know how to apply this with alerts? I mean, you guys are receiving alerts all the time. And if, if they're not specifying how many pips you're possibly winning, or possibly losing. If you want to make a smart decision with trading, you have to know this well in advance. Okay. So if I told you you can make a lot of money over time right now, you can quit that nine to five job that you're working, you can live the lifestyle you're doing, whatever, and all the cliche things people say. If I told you you can live that lifestyle, and all you had to do was just know how many pips are in each trade at potential win or loss, would you want to do that? Of course you would. So when I heard this for the first time, again, as a 20 year old kid back then, um, four years ago. I was like, okay, that seems easy enough. I can figure that out. I, you know, I was good at math, but I knew people that weren't good at math that were doing really well in trading and investing. So like, you know what? I, I probably have an edge here. 
Now, some of you that aren't the best at math, that's okay, because there's a lot of people that don't, don't know how to, you know, really multiply, add, or subtract, but they're making more money than anyone you probably know. And so that's the coolest thing is risk management. I got to understand, okay, cool. How can I calculate pips? So let's, uh, let's, let's do like a, I'm going to give you a fake example of a trade. So we're going to use the same, the same currency pair, USD CAD. It's going to be a buy at 1.2631. Okay, 1.2631. Your take profits, number one is going to be 2, 1.26, 1.2651. Take profit two is going to be 1.26, I don't know, 81. And then take profit three is going to be 1.2731. And our stop loss is going to be Okay, is that is that simple enough? You guys see that? Okay, cool. Um, let's bring this a bit closer. Okay, so here's an example of a trade alert they'd be looking at. And now, if I'm looking at this, how do I calculate if I'm not given how many pips this is going to be? How do I know what I'm going to win? And how do I know what I'm going to lose? So here's my wins and my loss, okay? So how do I calculate pips? It's simple math. You can actually subtract them, but I'm gonna show you an easier way where you can look at an alert and know right away how many pips it is. So you don't have to write it down on a piece of paper. In the beginning, you might have to write it down on a piece of paper, right, to know what the, what the pips are if they don't show you. And one way that I like doing it is I call it out, I, I call it the crossing out method. I don't think I invented it, but I'm gonna say I invented it because I didn't see anyone do it before me. But what, what it is, is pretty much anything that's coming from left to right, I cross off and I look at the difference. So let's show you a real life example of that, okay? So the USD CAD, I look at the exchange rate, by the way, this is the exchange rate, which we we're talking about, so I'm put entry price. The entry price is over here, all right? This was the time, so at, let's say, what, what time is it right now? It's 7.41. So at 7.41, you know, um, FX champions, I don't know, sent an alert that it's going to be a buy trade at 26.31, 1.2631. And at 7.41, that was the exact price that it was at, it, at that second, okay, that they sent the alert. Now, take profit one is 1.2651. So, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to compare them and cross it off, cross off what's coming. So on the left side, what's coming? One, right? Then it's the two, then six, three and five common. No, so we stop. I don't care that the ones are the same. doesn't matter. We stop as soon as there's a difference. Okay, we stop as soon as there's a difference. Now, what am I comparing? I'm comparing 31 and 51. What's the difference between that? 20 pips, right? 20 pips. So I know that take profit one is 20 pips in my, in my, um, in my favor. Okay. If I look at take profit two, who can give me the answer for take profit two? How many pips is that different from the exchange rate? I'm going to move out of the way. Yo, let me know the answer in the chat. The difference between 1.2681 and 1.2 or 1.2631 and 1.2681. What's the difference in the pips there? Nice, 50, right? Why? Because we crossed off what's common. At least I hope you did, right? 81 versus 31, very easy, that's 50. Now, if I do it here, I'm crossing off what? The one, the two, that's it. So I'm looking at 631 versus 731. What's the difference in that? What's the difference in that? Hundred, hundred. So my wins are twenty pips, fifty pips, and the hundred pips. Now, what's my loss? I'm not going to help you guys there. What's what's the loss that I have? Hmm. 
what's the loss that I have? And I calculate the difference between my stop loss and my entry price. What's the difference between that? See, this is a bit tricky because some of y'all haven't answered yet. Okay. I cross off the ones, I cross off the twos. So now I have 631 versus 581. What's the difference in that? Not as easy, right? 50 pips. 50 pips in the negative. I got some of y'all. I got some of y'all. That was intentional. <laughs> the code and, and Gina said 150. I'm glad, I'm glad you guys participated though. That's all I care about. Um, but that's where it's important, right? Just it's an easier number to subtract. So now I can just use my calculator. It's a lot easier than 1.26, blah, blah, blah. blah. So 20 pips, 50 pips, 100 pips, losses, 50 pips. Now, if I do the math, I'm going to erase this now. Okay. We're going to be doing a lot of erasing. I'm going to erase all of this. And now we're going to calculate that and convert it into dollars. Good. So now that I have my, my potential win and loss, what I'm going to do is calculate this in terms of dollars. So what do, we, what do we want our account size to be? Give me like a fake account size. What do you guys think is a very common beginner account size that we can apply to this trade? Five hundred. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna do 500. So now we're gonna apply everything, okay? 500, we're gonna do the allocation calculation and we're gonna do the pip and dollar calculation. So my loss size is gonna be 500 divided by 10,000, which is what? 0 0.05. Now I'm going to do my dollar per pip calculation. And now it's going to be account size divided by 1,000. So it's going to be 500 divided by 1,000. So I know that's going to be $0.5 per pip or 50 cents a pip, whatever you prefer. Okay, cool. So now I know this is important now. This is really important. Because now I have my, my what? my allocation, my lot size, or sorry, my dollar per pip. So now I can take the pips that I've calculated and show myself what I'm going to earn in dollars. Why is this important? Because a lot of you guys will not feel any type of way or emotion towards pips. You're like, oh yeah, I lost hundred pips, whatever. But once you see dollars, you start freaking out a little bit, right? So we want to know, so you understand what you're getting yourself into. And um, so now we're going to do this for take profit one. It's going to be 20 pips, 20 pips times $0.5 per pip. Here's where we get ugly because this is where we get into um, simple, simple math in elementary school. Okay, remember what we do? We cross off the units. We cross off the units, right? You guys remember that? I cross out my pips. My alarm needs to shut up. Okay, um, my pips, cancel them out. All I'm left with is dollars. Yo, I'm taking you guys through like a math class here. $10, right? This is mental math, so let's hope it's right. It's 20 times half. So $10, okay? So what I'll make off take profit one with a $500 account if I'm entering 0 0.05 is $10. Now that you understand how this works, take profit two, if I do 50 pips, 50 pips times 50 cents a pip, what is that? It's gonna be $25, right? You guys can double check, see if I'm right. Take profit three. I'll let you guys do this on your own. 100 pips times 50 cents a pip equals how much? How, many, how, mu how much uh, is the amount in dollars? 100 pips times 50 cents a pip, what is it?
$50. There we go. This mark is running out, but it's $50. Awesome. Now on the other hand, I'm gonna put this in red. 50 pips times the same thing for my stop loss means I'm potentially, I'm at risk of losing $25. So my potential risk is $25. My potential reward is either $10, $25, or $50. Okay? Does that make sense? I got that? Good? You good? All right. So now you see, people would say, why am I picking take profit one? Like, why would I pick it, right? Because I'm not going to make as much as I can lose. But also, there's the other side of, you know, I can't, I don't have time to enter trades. So I'm, I rather, you know, our trades are very good. So I'd rather make $10 um you know every couple of times and then maybe lose 25 dollars once out of a few trades but this is where we get into psychology and this is my last point so we finished risk management pit calculation that's actually the hardest part by the way that's the hardest part of entering alerts but it's the hardest part and probably the most essential with understanding how trades work so here's the thing this is where we get into number five, which is psychology. With trading, um, it's very easy to get lost in the copy paste system. And trust me, I know that better than anyone because I did get lost in it. And it's really good, right? It is really good. But then you kind of don't understand where you're making the money and you don't understand where you're losing the money. And entering trades is really cool. But I had like I had it kind of like a, a hole in me of like I wanted to know what was happening. And to understand what was happening, I needed to understand this. Because what I can do is imagine if the trader is already giving you the pips, why would I need to calculate the pips? I wouldn't need to anymore. But calculating them helps me understand lot size. It helps me understand the dollar value per pip. And it helps me understand, you know, to be more conscious of what my risk and reward is. I think that's really cool. Um, and that helps you understand more of the fundamentals of Forex anyways. Now, if I get into actually trading and looking at my risk allocation, why would I calculate pips? It's because I want to see, you know, where I should be entering my trades based on my loss size, based on my account size. And this made me more, more aware as a trader. See, what I was doing in the beginning was I was just answering trade alerts. I was making money and I posted on my stories back in the day when it was, you know, when it was actually compliance or maybe no one really cared. And um, well, it was never compliant. We just didn't care at the time. So I was posting my results on my stories. Hey, I just made $200, man, I made $500. I brought a $10,000 account to 20, or no, sorry, I brought a $1,000 account to $10,000 in the span of like, three months. And I remember that because it was September to December. So I was looking at the end of December of 2018 and I'm like, yo, <laughs> I just, I just made so much money, but it was all gambling. And I didn't understand that. And so I quickly lost pretty much that whole account. I was left with only a couple thousand dollars after that. So all the money that I had and I made, I lost it. Yes, it was profit. So it's not that big of a deal, but you know, that psychologically it takes a hit on you. So I had to understand the importance of the long-term game. The long-term game means setting yourself up to have income coming in to you, you know, pretty much every month, every week, every year that you're living. And that's the whole point of passive income. But also I got to learn the skill sets of trading because I need to learn how to make an active income while I make a passive income. And that's by the way, why I got into affiliate marketing, network marketing, because I knew I could build a business and make one stream of income that way, make another stream of income through trading. And now we have the AIs so I can put money in the AI. So it's a pure passive stream of income. So the psychology of investing really comes down to having a trading plan, understanding where your trades are coming from, understanding how they work, and more importantly, just making sure you're you know aware of all the risks. And that's really basic. You know, you guys can read the psychology um, of money or you know or the, the smart investor or the intelligent investor, I should say. You guys can read books like that and learn more about it, or you can go through our back office and learn a lot more about it. But that's the main principle. So set up a good trading plan. Don't be over trading, right? Don't be over trading. Don't enter multiple trades a day. Start off, start basic, start in a demo account. And trust me, your investments will thank you later. So this is pretty much the main thing with entering trades on Forex. I want all of you to understand this and apply it. I would love for all of you to have a trading journal. And what a trading journal is, at least for me, it was... Um, writing down all my trades. So yes, I could look at my history on my broker and all that kind of stuff, but I liked writing my trades down and writing down what I entered, what time I entered it, what day, and how long it took me to hit profit or loss, what I did right, 
what I did wrong, even if it was just copying and pasting. So this held me accountable to look at my results. Um, so when I lost money, I understood why. And also not taking certain trades that were maybe too risky for me. Like some of y'all, <laughs> some of y'all be trading with like a $200 account and you're trading gold or you're trading, you know, um, you know, commodities or stuff like that. Uh, you know, DJ, right? Dow Jones or um, S&P 500. Like you guys are trading things that through the Forex apps and brokers are extremely high risk and uh, with big lot sizes, right? And, th and that doesn't make sense. So be aware, this is not going to make you a millionaire right away. This is just like a little part of it, but it's a really important part of it that helped me, you know, really turn the $10,000 account that I blew pretty much to, you know, whatever it is now, which you can assume after four years, it's pretty solid, right? And, and it's pretty much helped me build the income. I haven't traded, fun fact about me, with my investments that I've you know, had over the last four years, I haven't pulled any money out of it. I'd say collectively, I probably pulled out less than $500 from my investments. Everything that I've made is compounding and sitting there. And the money that I use to fund my lifestyle all comes from my residual income. So I have my investments building up over time. And I don't share my investment portfolios a lot. I don't think anyone's really seen it, aside from people that know me from the beginning um, or people close to me. But I mean, one thing I'll show you guys, I think it's important, but you guys will see what trading with a small account started at and then what it becomes and uh, using the power of leveraging the services and the experts but that's pretty much it do you guys have any questions or can we leave it at that this different style of training i think it was really cool um i i saw through the other through the other device it's actually closer than it looks to me this looks really far away but apparently it's not that far away i think it was cool though so hope you all enjoyed that if you have any questions make sure you you know you guys can send me a message or you could let your mentor know. Um, I'm always down to answer questions. But like I said, if you didn't understand something, go to the university, go to Market Pro. This is where I gained all this information. I did not gain this info from a random course online. It was all through Red Genius. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you at the top because the bottom is way too crowded. Peace.